Hey, Magic friends, welcome back. This is the Captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We have band announcements to go over, so we'll make this one as quick as possible. Before we get started, though, the Patreon is up. Don't forget to go over and check it out. You can help feed that hungry-looking cat right there, <clears throat> along with a lot of other things. You can actually enable a lot of my bad habits while you're at it with this money. So, don't forget also, before you do this, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, put some comments down below, feed that YouTube algorithm. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I worry more about you guys subscribing than I do about you giving me money, and that's the truth. Because I want to know that I'm doing this for the right reasons and that you guys enjoy it. So, don't forget to comment up. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers. <clears throat> so, let's get started on what the new ban announcements are. So, trade tables and seat backs in a full upright position because we're about to dive right in. So, here on Wizards, you can see that they've actually made the announcement. For Pioneer, <clears throat> Loris of the Dream Den has been banned. It has also been banned in Modern. So, why is that? Well, we'll cover that what they say down below later. But just to be honest with you, uh, Luris has always been one of the companions that has been the most broken. Um, when you start tag-teaming it with baubles and small casting cost cards like Moxes and so forth, this thing just really gets out of hand. It enables a lot of combos, so forth and so on. Uh, it's just a really troublesome card, and I'm glad to see this thing go. But we'll get into details later about what they think. So actually, Popper got three different banning changes. Galvanic Ray has been banned. So it says exile top card of your library. Play it during this turn, or play it during your turn. You may, or during your turn, you may play that card. So I don't know why this has been banned. But I'm going to take a pretty good guess here. It says exile top card of your library. Uh, during your turn, you may play that card. It has Storm. Notice this card doesn't go away. You can play it anytime. Pretty sure that that's going to be pretty busted and popper. And then we have the Disciple of the Vault. Uh, so this is from Double Masters. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Artifact is put into the graveyard for the battlefield, you may have your target opponent lose one life. Um, I think I remember the deck this is in, but uh, I don't want to speak to it in case I'm wrong because I'm a professional. Uh, so we'll, get, we'll, we'll go down to the bottom and take a look at that as well. And Expedition Map has been unbanned. That's about to make this card really popular again. So what could be the reasons for all this? Well, let's go take a look. So they say right here in Modern, uh, they released Modern Horizons 2, uh, experiment, uh, and exploration. It says, despite that, Loris of Dream Den has remained an ambiguous presence across the format and multiple archetypes. Loris play rate is at 31%. I'm surprised it's that low. Um, points to the card that is contributing to a homogenous gameplay experience, basically saying all the decks are the same. As is often the case in larger rotating, non-rotating formats, there are already strong incentives to include as many cheap and effective cards as possible. Uh, into the deck, Luris compounds these incentives by providing a powerful additional resource to help alleviate the weakness of filling your deck with cheaper, less impactive things. Yep, due to the play data, community feedback, and desire to keep a diverse range of cards options as playable as possible, available to the modern, it has been banned. Okay, so what's its reasons for Pioneer? So, Lacosarian, the less dominant in Pioneer today, 20%. Again, I just find that to be amazing it's that low. <clears throat> anyway. We expect that Lurus metagame sh uh, share will only grow as Pioneer's card pool expands. Uh, that's probably right. Uh, our philosophy for Pioneer is to create a most compelling sandbox built from the recent standard sets as Pioneer continues to grow over time. That incentive of non-rotating formats to pick and choose the most effective cards from each of these releases will become more pronounced and Lurus will only serve to accelerate that process. Yep, basically just saying as they print good cards, one or two good cards from every set, it will eventually compound into a modern or legacy style format over time. All formats are like that. All formats share the same problem. Uh, and because of that, Luris will have to be banned because it was banned in other formats as well. So uh, it talks here about companions. Uh, while Luris' presence in Modern and Pioneer are large enough for us today, the rest of the companions are seeing a play rate that is in line with a diverse, healthy metagame. Like other components of the other environments, we'll continue to model them and make changes as necessary. I'm going to be completely honest with you on this one. Um, Luris is the only card that's busted out of any of the companions. I mean, you can you can say Yorian is kind of busted, but again, you got to play an 80 card deck. Uh, more often than not, in the older formats, that will probably get you killed, uh, and it makes the deck very unstable and therefore very hard to be um, consistent 
which makes that card okay. Uh, and the other ones, well, they just don't do a whole lot. And there are very, very few decks that play the other companions. So I think this is a good move uh, for Lurus. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, now it's not playable in any format other than maybe Commander. But I don't think Commander has sideboard, so technically it's not unless you put it in the deck. Anyway, point being, um, I think Lurus was a mistake when they printed it. Um, uh, the channel wasn't open back when this first came out, so I couldn't, I wasn't here for you guys to go back and see how wrong I was because I probably thought it was cool. But anyway, I actually, when I did see this card, I did think this was a mistake. Companions in general, I thought was a mistake, uh, only because of their how they were played, which they eventually changed that to make it better. But even then, the abilities that they provided was more problematic than any benefit they gave to the game um, and took away a lot of the fun. So. There you have it, boys and girls. Nothing like having a card in an area or a zone that you can't get to until they get a chance to just play it. So, with that said, let's take a look at Popper. Uh, it says, uh, oh, it says here to check out Gavin Verhey's explanation article. Well, let's just uh, take a shot over there. So, uh, we have Galvanic Relay. So, Storm Cars, long been story history of uh, getting the axe in Popper. Uh... Uh, so Chatterstorm and Galvanic Relay were tearing up the format. Um, after the ban of Chatterstorm, Galvanic Ray was a powerhouse without a strong enough home. However, the introduction of experimental synthesizer in Kama Galvania Dynasty, especially when backed with Deadly Dispute, was the missing piece to reopen this can of worms. In short order, Black Red Storm has climbed to the top of the format. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, now I want to say that Oh, and I bet this, this this goes straight into that black card. Um, so anyway, uh, I just want to say that uh, on the proper format here, we don't believe Storm exists in the format inherently a bad thing. Decks like Reaping the Graves based on Cycle Storm, blah, 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 my priest has seen success. Um, however, the problem comes when the deck is quick, powerful, and difficult to interact with. With this new red-black deck uh, is all of those things... Yada yada. Uh, this may not sound like much, but in context, dominant decks in Magic history often sit in the high 50% range. Somewhere to 60 is quite high. Uh, oh, it had a, this deck had a margin win rate of 60%. Sweet Jesus, that's insane. Uh, so while the other grade was an obvious card to ban, it's important to investigate other options. You know, because we have Lotus Petal here, Cabal Ritual. Uh, which just gets you the mana you need, Dark Ritual, and the Rite of Flame. So all these things are going to be awful. Uh, of course, Skyfisher. Oh, okay, yeah, you can play this and then bounce it back to your hand and cause it to trigger. Glint Hawk. Oh, yeah, okay, so, like, once you get the that red artifact out, you can just draw through your whole deck with it. So, yep, yeah, I can see this is an issue. And then next we have Disciple of the Vault. After banning Atogs, a lot of discussion uh, about Disciple of the Vault. Uh, eventually, just Atog won out of this ban. Uh, after watching the metagame evolve, it's clearly immediately the affinity was far from gone without Atog. Uh, it was still the most played deck and one of the best performing in the leagues and challenges. In fact, even right now, Affinity remains the most popular deck in the leagues by close to twice the next popular deck, which is Black Red Storm, although Black Red Storm's win rate was substantially higher. Sweet Jesus. So they basically are taking out both these Affinity decks and the Black Red Storm deck because it's just insane, apparently. Um, So with Atog down, it says here people began to use cards like Clark, Clay, and Shaman. Sacrifice an artifact, one damage each player of each creature without flying. Uh, really leaned into the combination of a couple of Disciple Revolts to kill your opponent in one fell swoop. You can repeatedly activate Clark, Clay, and Shaman before the first ability would kill your Disciple of the Vaults. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so basically, you know, you just activate, come on, you just activate this thing over and over until the first damage kills your Vault guy. Uh, and the fact that the deck had obviously a bunch of artifact lands that were common, you know, just made it insane. Yep, so there you have it. So now we'll talk about Unban of Expedition Map, I guess. Well, I don't know why this is a good thing, but 
Blonder's ointment was banned. Prosthetic prism. Okay, so they they're now they're not seeing Tron decks. Uh, now they want to see more con Tron decks. So without putting this back in and this back in, they're gonna unban Expedition Map. So there you have that. So other cars, it looks like they're on the chopping block. This Moon Circuit Hacker was a car that we were initially worried about. While it still has our attention, Fairies does not appear to be a problem currently. Okay, because, yeah, just, you know, come in, draw a card. Seems pretty good. Uh, it's a solid deck to play. Obviously, this has their attention as well. So there you have it, guys. There's some of the explanations. Feel free to pause the video anytime you want if you want to do a little more reading. Because, uh, once again, I'm not into it too much. Reading, that is. Um... <laughs> So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Until next time, be kind. And as always, remember, I hope to see you across from the game table.